Hey everybody, I'm going to show you guys five essential After Effects scripts that I love to use. Um, these are third-party scripts um, that you download and install um, to use along with your regular After Effects um, program. I'm going to show you why I love them, a couple tips and tricks about them, um, and hopefully you guys will learn something new and find some other great tools to help you make uh, better animations and projects. So uh, the first thing you know about adding scripts is where how to do it basically. Um, every script kind of has is run a little bit differently. Your plugins, um, presets, different things, um, but you can find them all in your applications folder. So if you look for the After Effects folder, um, and the one that I'm be looking at today, everything I show you today is going to be a script. So it's inside your scripts folder. You uh, drop those. They're usually JSX files or JSX bin files. The ones I'm going to show you today are all dockable panels that can actually be used. And so uh, they come with other files and resources that you put in your script UI panels. So just make sure you read your installation settings and um, they should tell you where to put everything. Uh, the first one I want to show you guys is called Ease and Wiz. Basically what Ease and Wiz does um, is it allows, um, it uses some great math and um, expressions to drive um, very dynamic and interesting keyframe animations. So when you keyframe something, um, over time, you just, you know, I'm going to show you position right now, but you drop a keyframe in one place and then you drop it in the place you want it to go. So over time, it goes from A to B and it gets there, but it's very linear. There's no curve, there's no speed, there's nothing like that. That's just kind of the default when you set a keyframe. So um, when I want to go to point A to point B, there's a lot of different ways to get there, essentially, and Ease and Wiz helps you do that um, in a really fun, quick way. So here's what it looks like. Um, this is your dock up here. And when you launch it for the first time, this is what it'll, what it'll show. And essentially, you can apply all these different types of eases to your, um, to your keyframe animation. So I have, um, these all stand for something more advanced than I probably know, but um, they're short for different mathematical things and how the math is done. So this is how dynamic it is. You see right away I've got um, five very unique um, ways from getting the same exact keyframe data as what I showed you before, but the math that's applied has them all easing in and out of the animation a little bit differently. So that's how each one looks different um, based on what they're called. Um, but there you can see the original one down there at the bottom in the blue and then how different each one looks depending on what um, ease setting you apply to it. So. Um, right away, another thing about this that I love a lot is they have these three bonus ones at the bottom called Back, Bounce, and Elastic. And these are great for um, if you want to show something that um, has to take off into an animation, something that needs to bounce in, like a, um, like a static, like a ball bouncing or a block or something, I and mean, also Elastic. Um, and you can see those ones here, kind of like how they all do something different. So the Elastic one really overshoots and then comes back, so it feels kind of rubbery. Um, back, you can see, kind of pulls out of it and then launches into it and then overshoots again a little bit. And then bounce just kind of rocks into place and bounces in. So, again, really um, interesting. And all this took was a click of a button. So, it's really neat. Um, with these two, actually, um, I made sure that I only activated the out type, not the in and out type. Um, otherwise, it would do it at the beginning of the animation as well. So, let me give you a really quick demo on how to do this. And I want to animate, let's do position and rotation just for fun here. And I want to animate the position and the rotation. Um, I'll set a keyframe. I'll move ahead and I'll move it across my screen. And I'm also going to rotate it 180 degrees. Boom. So play that back. That's what that looks like. It does a little spin. And it's set. But when we apply ease and whiz to it, um, you essentially want to highlight your layer and uh, shift click on the two. Um, properties that you want to affect in the expressions and then you can go up here and start having fun with your uh, ease and whiz panel and do different things with it so let's try for fun to do uh, we'll just do expo we'll do in and out we'll apply it just to see what it does to it so right away it kind of delays for a minute um, and then takes off and then eases into the animation so that already creates something really nice uh, if you want to add a little bit of motion blur you know that'll create a little bit of niceness to it as well so that already took a very simple animation with one click of a button into something really awesome. So there's a couple other things we could do with this, and I'll show you that real quick as well. So if you ever want to overwrite uh, an ease and whiz expression that you created, you just make sure that you're on the first keyframe, highlight again your two properties here, 
and then we'll change it to something else. So let's try that um, elastic one that I was showing you guys. Apply it. Again, something really dynamic and interesting. Um, right now, in and out is the type selected. So you can see at the beginning, um, it starts to move. I'm going to hide this for a second. It starts to move, and it almost um, kind of spring loads into the elasticity and then takes off and then overshoots and then has the elastic on the back end as well. So really cool. Gives it a lot of character, a lot of life. Um, and, you know, kind of semi creates the... Um, staging and anticipation property of animation there and then flies into it. But if you say you didn't want that to happen at the beginning, you just want to take off and then have the elasticity at the end, you can just change it to the out type, type only, apply that, and then it will just overshoot at the end. Um, you can see it really, really takes off though when you do it that way. So you may need to play with your keyframes and where they align to get it to line up when it, when it actually needs to hit for you. And if you don't want it to overshoot that far, then you're gonna need to go back and adjust your last keyframe and that's as simple as doing this and it's going to keep all your properties and everything in there um, and still create a really great animation so reposition anchor point this one's pretty self-explanatory but I'm going to show you why it changed my life so I'm going to show you this example with a square but a lot of times you're working with other shapes and different things and shape layers and um, your anchor point starts doing something like this you can be with text or with um, a layer you're using or a shape layer or a solid and I'm going to start wanting to animate with this t with this um, sh layer here, and my anchor point's in the wrong place, so I can't get exact zero. Um, when I begin to try to line things up, it just gets you know a little bit wonky and messed up. So really quick, easy tool. Uh, it's another script, and here's your panel here called Reposition Anchor Point, and it's exactly what it says it does. You can pick where you want your anchor point to align. So obviously dead center, boom, it's going to pop it to the center. If I want the upper right hand corner, click the upper right hand corner, boom. Very self-explanatory, but literally once I found this, it changed my life and made me way more efficient and just saved me a lot of time. I'm gonna show you one called Explode. So a lot of times if you're animating, uh, especially with intricate uh, Illustrator files, um, you get maybe something like this from an artist or maybe you made it um, or a designer and this is your character um, that you're gonna use for this animation, let's say. And this thing is really intricate. So maybe the layers aren't broken out properly for you in Illustrator, or it looks really awesome, but you want to get to work with it right away inside of After Effects. Uh, over the last couple iterations of After Effects, they have this really cool layer expression called Create Shapes from Vector Layer. And when you click on that, it's going to take that Illustrator data and break it out into shape layers um, inside of After Effects, which is super awesome for many reasons. Um, you have a lot more control over the, uh, you essentially now are working with your raw kind of vectors inside of here. So if you did want to tweak uh, maybe the way his elbow looks a little bit or move something around, you can totally do that. What this doesn't allow um, is the flexibility to really animate with it because I now have one shape layer with 168, I believe it is, 163 different groups inside of it. So if I wanted to say animate his foot, I need to go find out which one is his foot, highlight it, go find it in the group, it's number 87, toggle that down, toggle down the transform properties, and then I get to say rotation. <coughs> and if there's details, obviously you see there, it's even more messed up. So there's this awesome script called <coughs> Explode. And I can now take that shape layer and I can hit um, the explode shape layers button and it's gonna break it out for me and every single one of those groups now is gonna be it's inside of its own shape layer. Granted, that's still a lot of layers. So what can we do? What did they add to this um, kind of script to make it even more efficient is I can select, say I wanna uh, group his hand. So I'm gonna highlight everything here inside of his hand and you can see it um, highlighted those layers, all those different shape layers, I can press merge. And now it has it merged out into one, here it is, one shape layer with the multiple masks inside of it. So now I have his hand here and um, I could use my awesome reposition anchor point expression uh, script here, reposition it, and now I can get right to work if I wanted to animate this or do other things with it. Obviously, it's still going to require some work because I have to go click around and group some of these things. Um, 
and this is a massive file I'm showing you in my example, but um, trust me, it'll save you a ton of time and give you a lot of flexibility um, in your animations and in working with complex shape layers. So that was the explode one. Um, the next one is called Rift, and Rift um, is really cool, and it's way more complex than I really know how to use, but I'm gonna show you very simply what I, what I love about it. So say I have these, um, in this example, six shapes, uh, just like before when I showed you guys ease and whiz, they're flying across the screen. Kind of cool, but not super interesting because they're all going at the exact same time. So what I could do is I could go in here and I could offset these and I could make them look a little more randomized and kind of have some fun with it and make them look a little more intricate or a little more interesting rather. And that's awesome, but I don't really have a ton of control over that. And if I'm working with, again, 20, 30, 100 layers and I want to create a really intricate but awesome animation offsetting a bunch of stuff, um, doing that by hand is not very efficient. So there's this awesome script called Rift. Let me show you the power and why it's so awesome. So if I select the layers I want to use, I go over and use Rift here. There's a lot of different things you can do. You can select you know, what part of the layer you want to move. You can select um, the keys. You can affect time. You can affect shift. You can align keys. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. And again, I don't know about every one of these things. I'm sure there's amazing tutorials that will break down every single or explainer videos they'll break down every single step for you but I like to use is this arrange function here and the randomize function so I want to stagger these or sequence them so I'll click sequence and this is based on you can base this on frames you can base it on seconds you can base it on whatever you want so I'll go up here and base it on frames in the default unit and I'll do 10 frames in ascending order and I want them to um, ease in with again here's some of those uh, words and this is going to do a bunch of fun math exactly like we did up here with ease and whiz um, that will create a curve essentially an ease property to how these animate in and out and then when I apply that you'll see it does kind of like a curve with the animation so now if we watch these and how they animate you get something really fun and interesting really quickly so this is fun when you use a lot of text when you use a lot of different shapes, um, a lot of solids, um, and you can again just click on these. Say I want to reverse that, I can do desetting order, apply that, and now I've got another interesting animation. So you can do a ton with this. You can also just simply do randomize and say I want the minimum to be, I want a minute at least move everything five frames, but no more than 15 frames. Play that out, and now I've got. Um, something a little more random, doesn't look as perfect as it just did. So really fun tool, um, you can do a lot with it and it can really help um, give your animations, especially when you have a lot of layers. Um, so those are some of the essential scripts that I like to have, that I like to use. Um, they make, usually make my workflow faster or they're kind of default tools that are in my toolkit um, that just make me work better or I feel comfortable with them or I lean on them when I need to do something. Two other ones I want to tell you about, um, but I'm not going to get into, have to do with character animation. If you're going to do anything with character animation, um, I highly recommend two plugins. Um, one a little more than the other. Uh, the one I really, really recommend, it's also free, it's called D-U-I-K. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this word, Dudoof or Dudoof or whatever it says. Um, but this is a phenomenal tool. It's a little more intricate. There's tutorials on how to use it. Um, but it is really awesome and I've used it before for different animations and takes a little time to set up but once you rig your character uh, there's really nothing like it another one that uses just the puppet tool um, is called puppet tools 3 and um, it can be found at AE scripts and AE plugins and that's actually what I'm gonna wrap up with is telling you guys that's where I got all of these so here's ease and whiz um, this is a great website there's some just very great um, tools to make you more efficient um, to help you try some new things, do some experimenting. Um, a lot of these are made by really brilliant minds um, who did a ton of work and a ton of math to figure out how to make some very intricate, interesting things. So I highly recommend it. You can download these, try them out, see different things you like. Um, hope that was helpful. Hope you guys learned a lot um, and maybe learned something you uh, didn't know before, but um, scripts can be your friend and they can really help you out, make some fun animations. Um, 
And if nothing else, they're fun to just play with and try new things and uh, look for opportunities to interject something new uh, into your work. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you found something helpful. And we'll talk to you later. See you.